Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So this is a very special pen that I am reviewing here today. I have previously done an unboxing of this pen. This is a Visconti clearly, but it is a very, very special pen in my collection. And I will show you why. So if you have already seen the unboxing video, uh, the quick unboxing, you will know what pen I am talking about and why it is so special to me. So this, if you haven't seen it, is a pen that I have been looking for and wanting for a couple of years now to add to my collection and thanks to Marco at Novelli he set himself a very high challenge to come up with this pen and to sell me this pen and I thought it was an impossible challenge for a brand new pen but Marco managed to do just that and actually do it quite quickly so my hat's off to Marco and next time I think I'm going to set a much more difficult challenge for Marco. So let me unbox this pen now. It is a very, very heavy box. It's the most heaviest box that I have from Visconti and you will see why. So this is how it comes and this is a lovely cloth or felt like drawstring bag that goes over the box and protects the box and you'll see why if I now remove this it is a stunning stunning box now this is a 2d palindrome and this palindrome was found engraved in a square, circular and cross-like shape on a number of ruins in Europe, particularly in Italy, some of which are over 2,000 years old. Palindromes date back as far as 79 AD, found at the Graffito at Herculaneum, a city buried by ash in that year. And this palindrome is called the Sator Square, and it consists of a sentence written in Latin. Now it's difficult to establish the literal meaning of this sentence, but from left to right the palindrome reads Sata Arepo Tenet Opera Rotas, and this can be translated as follows. The sower with his plough holds the wheel with care, or, according to other interpretations, the sower Arepo leads the plough with his hand. According to a more recent interpretation, the palindrome is brought to have an astronomical or cosmological meaning, and therefore it can be translated as follows. The great sower, i.e. God, with his plough, makes the celestial orbits and mechanisms go on. And this translation will be consistent more so with the generally accepted belief in the late Middle Age that the Sator God would be the ultimate engine of the universe. An even more recent interpretation suggests that the sower decides his daily works, but only the Supreme Court decides upon his destiny, which actually might be a more fitting one for the Knights Templar. And this is what this is. So let me open the box. And you'll see here, it comes with the Visconti logo in a felt-like case and this box is immensely immensely heavy it also comes with a number of things but let me remove this tray first it comes with the Jacques de Molay and this is the ID card along with the Visconti guarantee and it also comes with this lovely Knight's Templar ring, which is a very weighty ring. And if I put that on my finger here, you can see just how big that is compared to like my other ring. It's a massive ring. If I put it on this finger here, you'll see just how I what I mean there. It is a massive 
ring. But uh, it's a lovely ring though, and you can see here a little bit more detail. The ring itself. It's a really lovely ring. It comes with this sword or dagger and this is actually quite sharp uh, it's not sharp enough to cut my finger with but it's actually quite sharp though uh, this would be used as a letter opener and you can just see how thin that blade becomes so it is quite sharp and then you can see the level of detail here on that sword and that is amazing on that handle there and the grip it really is a lovely, lovely sword or dagger. So that is another thing that comes with this pen. And then obviously you have this gorgeous pen. And this is the Jacques de Molay. Now Jacques de Molay lived between 1243 and 1314. And was not only a Knights Templar, but the 23rd and last remaining Knights Templar, or the Grand Master. His goal was to reform order and adjust it to the situation of the Holy Land during the Crusades. Jacques de Molay and the remaining Knights Templar were arrested and charged by King Philip IV of France for alleged crimes, which of course they denied, but were tortured into making forced confessions. When Jacques de Molay later retracted his, his confession, King Philip had him burned upon a scaffold in front of Notre Dame in Paris. It has been claimed that Jacques de Molay, in his final words, brought upon a curse to King Philip, his descendants and Pope Clement V. Pope Clement died of a long illness in April 1314, and King Philip died due to a stroke whilst hunting both within a year of Molay's execution. So the story behind the Knights Templar and Jacques de Molay is a very interesting one and I think this really makes this pen a lot more special. So let me show you in a little bit more detail here. You can see here the the great craftsmanship on this pen, the chain mail that goes on, the the, the red swords and crosses, uh the it's really like an armor that that is here on uh, the pen itself and really actually shows the, the kind of or depicts the kind of armor that the the Knights Templar would have been wearing in the Middle Ages. Now this is a Paravac filler so to normally you would unscrew this and pull the rod out but you unscrew the blind cap and what you will see here is an, a very exquisite knob there and this pen isn't inked up, but you will pull the knob out and then push it back down. And that then creates the suction and the, the vacuum to suck up ink into the pen. So I think it's actually a, a rather unique uh, piston or power vac filling knob there. Now, the other thing also you have here on the finial, you have the Visconti logo. Uh, uh, it's not a my pens finial, so it cannot be removed. And if I unscrew the cap here, you will see it comes with a 23 cap palladium medium nib, and that's the the nib that I requested on this pen. Uh, it has an ivory color section. It has quite a large step down, uh, but I don't feel that because it is way out of the way for me uh, and it does come with a uh, ivory colored feed as well now I'm not one normally for ivory feeds because they, they will look a little bit dirty when inked up I think it matches the pen extremely well and you also have this silver ring around the the base of the section this is solid silver uh, AG 925 and the pen is really really nice you can see there it's it's a, a lovely size or at least for me I like my large pens but it really is a gorgeous gorgeous pen so 
let me show you against a few other pens so you can see the size difference. I'll show you with a Visconti Homo Sapiens and you can see that the pen here is massively wider um, be between the, the girth of the pen but also the length of the pen as well. It is quite a behemoth of a pen and if I show another pen now this is a large pen a Visconti Opera Master and it dwarfs the Visconti Opera Master just look at the size of that pen and then the other pen that I have which is what I consider a Grail of Grails and, and this is a Grail of Grail as well is the Visconti Camelot and again it is a massive massive pen but it's a pen that actually feels really good in my hand um, it doesn't have a clip now clips do not bother me uh, if a pen is clipless I have a number of pens that don't have clips and I actually do like them you do have to be careful for them not to roll off the desk uh, but this is I, I, I think if if this had a clip on it I really think that this wouldn't have been as nice a looking pen as it really is so as you can see here the the material the workmanship on this you can see even the hammered divots sort of along here it's amazing that level of detail it's just so detailed with this pen and it's something that I really think that Visconti did a very very good job on So for me, this is what I class a grail of grails. It is a pen that is certainly a grail pen, but it's a grail pen that I will never sell. At least I don't think I will ever sell because this, for me, the complete set. I have been offered a number of these pens uh, more recently and all of them have been second hand some of them have been a lot more plain they didn't have all of this sort of armor sort of uh and chainmail work on the pen they didn't come with the dagger or necessarily the ring so they were a very cut down version of this pen there are this pen obviously there is also uh a another version of this pen with red rubies in the cross which even though this pen is very, very expensive, this entire set is, the ruby version is even more expensive, and then there is a solid gold version of this pen, which is insanely expensive. But for me, this was the set to have. I wanted the ring, I wanted the, the dagger or sword, and I wanted the pen, and I wanted it with the armour that the Knights Templar would have worn in the Middle Ages and this for me is the set to have so I have passed up on a number of other options for this pen I was really glad that Marco came through on this for me at Novelli with Visconti and uh, I thank Visconti as well this really uh, for me is a prized pen for my collection and a prized set for my collection and I think also I'll show you that I think really it goes very well with the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico and the Camelot so for me this really is a lovely pen to be able to add to my collection and as I said this is a grail of grail pens for me so I think let's do a size check and a weight check 
So the entire length of this pen is about 163 millimeters in length. The cap is 75 millimeters. So as you can understand, that is quite a sizable pen. Now, in terms of length from the tip of the tines, we are looking about 148 millimeters. So again, that is a very oversized pen. But for me, I find this actually quite nice. Now, let's do a weight check. Now, clearly this is uninked. And I'll try and make sure it doesn't roll away. Because I don't want this rolling away. So this is around about 63 grams in weight. The cap is just over 24 and a half grams. And then the pen itself is around about 39 grams in weight. So it is not necessarily a heavy pen compared to some. I have heavier pens, but clearly this is quite a heavy pen considering most pens are probably around about 20 to 25 grams in weight and then the size of the pen is crazy and if I were to show you against for instance a Pelican M800 you will get to see <laughs> the size difference it is a massive massive pen but a pen that feels very very comfortable to me so here's a comparison against other Visconti pens that I have in my collection. I have the very, very large Visconti Speakeasy, the Visconti Belgica, the Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust, the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico, the new Visconti Knights Templar Jacques de Molay, the Visconti Camelot, the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Swirl, the Visconti Luxor Obelisk, and the Visconti Corsani 90 in the stacked celluloid. And you can see how large this pen is. It's actually larger than the Speakeasy. The Speakeasy, I can just about move top to bottom there, but this Jacques de Molay isn't going anywhere it is the largest pen that i now own in my collection and you can see there that it really does dwarf every other pen so let's do a writing sample this is the visconti Jacques de Malay and this is a 23 carat palladium nib and it is a medium nib and I'll show you the line width now you can push the nib a little bit more but I'm not going to push this too much because it is a 23 cap palladium nib. Now the ink is diamine Oh, grey. Now this nib does have a little bit more of a feedback and it does feel a little bit more like a finer nib than a medium nib to me and I think that's where this feedback is coming from but it's actually not unpleasant feedback it's about middle of the road uh, for me but I still like how this pen writes and I love the line variation 
So let's do a wetness test. You can see here it's actually quite dry a nib. So it's not uh, normally I find diamond Earl Grey can be quite a wet nib, but for me this really is not that wet a nib at all. Now I tend to like more fire hose nibs. So this might be a nib at some point that I look to improve the ink flow on. But for me, I do love the shading that is going on here with this nib uh, in this pen. Uh, it is quite a, a lovely... Quite a lovely writer. So that is the Visconti Jacques de Molay the Knight's Templar pen and this is a gorgeous pen that I am going to really 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 enjoy having in my collection thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video bye bye